Spending some time up in the mountains, I continued the journey east, driving over the Venabygdsfjelle mountain pass and down on the other side. It's a pretty scenic drive with the occasional flock of sheep blocking the road. The farmers usually let the sheep roam around freely in the summer before taking them down to the farm in the fall time. They become so used to seeing cars that they seem to forget the potential danger. The plan for the day is to drive towards the mining town of Røros, but I'll do some stops along the way, starting with the Sulia church. This timber church was built in 1738 in a so-called long church architecture style and is well worth a visit. small uh, isteri here uh, which is a cheese maker making real brown cheese so I'm gonna go in and um, have a look see what they got brown cheese or goat cheese is made from whey and cream and then caramelized to get its brown color it's one of the most iconic food you find in Norway and is typically eaten on top of open-faced sandwiches or Norwegian waffles this smells and looks Incredible. Incredible. I could I could fall into this pot. Vi mjölkar rätt från rätt från hjärtan. Har så varmt till separering och så blir det skilt ut flöte och skummjölk. Så har vi löjpe i skummjölken som som skiller ut vitosten. Så det blir bara en mysa igen. Og mysa koker vi opp, og kok den en times tid, så putter vi opp i fløten igjen. Ok. Så det blir sånn en kaloribombe. Veldig høy fettprosent. Ja. Jeg tipper at den ligger på 20-25 prosent, tenker jeg. Hva er det? Takk, tusen takk. Så drar vi den ned i, ser om Drypper det, renner det, eller dette har vi kladder. Ok. Dette har vi kladder, så er den ferdig. Den er ferdig, ja. Ok. After the cheese has reached the right texture, it is stuffed into wooden molds of different sizes. It's quite labor intensive to make just one brown cheese like this, but it makes every cheese into a piece of art. Hva? Den her er egentlig veldig eksklusiv, for det finnes kun en form i hele verden, og det er Solhjærkjerka. Wow! Den var vi ikke helt her. Så det er lokale geiter også? Ja, ja, ja. Søstre av meg, Sogeren, har det med. De fleste av oss er naboen og har totalt ca. 250 geiter. Very good. Very rich flavor. Very rich. So I'm next to a mountain range here, which is called the uh, Rondane, and. Uh, there's some pretty nice viewpoints along the road here. And uh, there's one here that is called Solbergplassen, place of Solberg. And it's named after a Norwegian painter called Harald Solberg. And in 1914 he painted a painting which uh, is called Winter Night in the Mountains. And uh, it could have been painted from this uh, exact uh, spot here. I 
I continued driving north on National Road 27 with the Rondane National Park to my left. Driving on these back roads means that there is very little traffic and you get the feeling of being very close to nature. The landscape is dotted with mountains, lakes, cows, farms and fields. I decided to make a stop by Foldar Bygdetun. The word Bygdetun can best be translated as a rural museum. It's basically a collection of all the houses from the countryside, gathered together to be preserved and exhibited to the public. There are many of these Bygdetuns around in Norway, and it's a great way to gain a better understanding about the purpose of each building and how people lived in rural Norway back in the old days. After about 160 kilometers and many stops that day, I finally drive into the mining town of Furöros in the late evening. And the next day I start exploring the town. But more about that in the next episode, when I visit an old copper mine and drive to Dovre National Park to look for musk ox. But end up finding a troll instead. Thank you.